welcome to another special edition of Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains. And right now, we're going to be going out to Apache Land slash the Superstition Mountain Museum. And we're going to be talking with Hank Sheffer, who for years played the old prospector out there, Jacob Waltz. Hank, take it away. One of the other things, one of my other responsibilities out at Apache Land, aside from having all the fun that I did, was uh, I was the Dutchman. Uh, we did the story of the Dutchman. The schedule called for it to be five to seven times a day uh, if we had the crowds, which we didn't. Uh, the most I ever did it in a day was four. Uh, most of the time it was one or two times. And we had an area where we did that. We had a little cabin that was the Dutchman's cabin and one of the fellows would read the story and then the other person would pantomime what was going on with that story. And we made a comedy thing out of it. We had a little mine there, um, which for the longest time you could see out there. I don't know that you can still see any of it anymore, uh, but it was there the last time I was there, which was several years ago. But be that as it may, it always amazed me because I, I had written a book on, on the Dutchman. I started plugging stuff into my computer and I plugged stuff into that stupid computer for nine years. And somebody finally said, why don't you write a book? Could have been Charlie, I don't know. Was it you? I don't know who's that. Sure, it? it was me. It must have been you. It was me. You don't get any credit on that though. Mm. I mean, the resids aren't that great, trust me. But at any, <laughs> but be that as it may, so I finally put it together but, and started to learn lots of things about the Dutchman, but did that show. And what was amazing to me that I, I could do that show, let's say I did it three times in a day, especially on a, on a Saturday. I'd have many of the same people sitting in the audience three times. It was like, bear in mind now, we're talking 30 years ago or more. We're talking about a lot of people who were really interested in making little rocks out of big rocks, going out and finding the gold, want to find a cave that has the gold bars in it, the, just any number of things. Um, and while we didn't, we didn't talk about where you could find gold, because uh, usually at the end of the show, what I would tell them to do was if you wanted to have gold, the same way that the Dutchman had gold, get a job. Didn't get a lot of laughs, but everybody came back to see the show again, see if they could pick up something else. Hank, way back when, it seems like 10, 20 years ago, but it wasn't. It's about three years ago when we uh, did uh, one of the first shows here at Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains with you reading about the Lost Dutchman. Let's revisit that for a minute, shall we? This is the one that we used at Apache Land. We used to do it down at his at the old shack that we had down there. But anyway, it went like this. It says, I'm your old storyteller here to tell you the story of Jacob Waltz and his lost Dutchman gold. There's lots of different versions of the story, but Jacob Waltz's secret has managed to stay just that, a secret down through these many years since his passing back in 1891. Our story takes place in the shadow of the majestic Superstition Mountain. Pushed up as volcanic fault eons ago, this mountain range has become one of the most famous mountains in the world today. The Indian will tell you that it is a sacred mountain and is the home of the powerful Thunder God, and that this Thunder God is the protector against all who would infringe upon the sacred grounds that nestle deep within her scraggly peaks. Now, Jacob Waltz, Walsh, Walzer, depending on whose expert opinion you want to go by, was born in Wartenburg, Germany back in 1810. Some folks will tell you it was 1808, but the most widely accepted date of his birth is 1810. Not much is known about him until his appearance here in the Arizona Territory in the 1860s. The archives in the state capital in Phoenix will tell you that Jake was a miner in the old vulture mine up there to Wickenburg. What the archives don't tell you is that he was a high-grade ore. 
You see, wagers for miners wasn't all that great in those days, and high grading was a pretty good way to supplement one's income. Now, though he was never caught at it, it was pretty sure that that's just what he was doing. And folks, high grading is just plain stealing. Jacob Wall's life doesn't have too much significance for anybody but himself, of course, until about 1880, when stories are starting to circulate around the bars and saloons down on Washington Street in the little town of Phoenix. Seems like this certain old prospector is making an awful lot of trips up into the Superstition Mountain, each time returning with these burrows heavily laden with rich gold ore. In fact, between the years of 1881 and 1889, this sly old rascal shipped off $254,000 worth of that gold to the San Francisco and Philadelphia mints. We know this to be true because there are shipping orders by way of Wells Fargo and the Butterfield stage lines. Now the question pops up, where did that gold come from in the first place? Certainly Jake couldn't have stolen that much gold, could he? Some say it was truly Indian gold taken from the sacred shrines from within the mountain. One story goes so far as to say old Jake returned to town one time with an Apache arrow in his shoulder and an Indian squaw in tow. The story continues that the Indian girl had told Jake, a white man, the secrets of the mountain, but for her indiscretion, the great chiefs had cut her tongue out and released her to die in the old man's arms. There are others who will tell you that the gold was that of Don Miguel Peralta. There are records down in Mexico to substantiate this story. It is said that the Peraltas found rich deposits of rose quartz all over the area, extending from what is now Goldfield Town all the way over past Coffee Flat. However, in 1847, the Apache again played a significant part in messing up history for the white man. They attacked the helpless Mexican peon miners, and only Don Miguel would escape with his life back to Mexico. You see, the Indian, all he knew was that gold belonged to the Thunder God. He had more use for the burrows and other livestock. So he took the animals and he dumped the gold on the ground right there on what is known as massacre grounds. Now, heard tell that Jake was a cantankerous old buzzard and kept pretty much to himself. He was known to drink pretty heavy and could keep up with the best of them in that department. But even so, not a single child would go without a pair of shoes, nor anybody ever go hungry when the grand old man was in town. Near as what fact tells us, though, Jake never gave his gold to anybody. Well, sir, he might not have given his gold away, but he did leave us some clues as to the location of his fabulous gold. He said that he could see Weaver's Needle from his mine, but he couldn't see the mine from Weaver's Needle. Personally, I think the old man had a little bit of humorous larceny in him because he also said that at four o'clock in the afternoon, the shadow of Weaver's Needle would fall directly into the entrance of his mine. Let's see now, there's 365 days in the year. Certainly four o'clock is a little bit different every day. Seems like that shadow is gonna cover an awful lot of real estate in a year's time. He also said that he could see the military road from his mine. Ironically, most people who visit Apache Junction have been on or near that old road at one time or another, and they never even knew it. It is now February, 1891. It's a cold, rainy February morning. Even so, old Jake is getting ready to make another trip into the mountain to get him yet another load of gold. As he was crossing the Salt River, he was caught in a flash flood. It washed away the burrows in his home, and he managed, but he managed to skedaddle up a little mesquite tree. He hung there in that tree for the better part of two days until help came. This 81-year-old man had caught himself a bad case of pneumonia. pneumonia. He was taken down out the tree and taken to a friend of his, a Miss Julia Thomas. Now it is said that she was a nurse of sorts, and evidently a pretty good one. 
She did the best she could for old Jake all that spring and summer. But come October 25 of 1891, Jacob Walsh passed away, taking with him the secret of his fabulous treasure. Well, folks, now you know the legend of Jacob Walsh and his lost Dutchman gold. But the mystery surrounding the Dutchman may never be solved. You'll have to draw your own conclusions. Was it Indian gold? Was it the gold of Don Miguel Peralta? Or was the old man simply a very clever thief? I don't think we'll ever know for sure, but I can tell you this. As long as men venture into the mountain, men will die. Many have already. Men like Adolf Ruth, Al Morrow, Jay Clapp, and Old Man Piper. As long as there is that dream and that thirst for adventure, men will seek out the gold of Jacob Walls. The mighty superstition mountain will stand, and the lost Dutchman legend will live in the hearts of men forever. Well, thanks, Hank. There you have it, the story of Jacob Waltz, the lost Dutchman mind, one of those mysteries of the superstition mountains.